And we're back to our Airstream renovation. As you can see, we got a new flooring in. It's a natural floor. It's eco-friendly. It's just the front lawn. So, that's cool. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. If you're new here, this is Chasing the Wild Wonder, and we are working on a 1987 Airstream Excella. And we have been renovating this for the last year. When we last left you guys, we were about to put the shell back on when a freak snowstorm came out of nowhere and blew the shell over and it landed on its side. Thank God it did not roll over. None of the windows broke. Just a little bit of damage to the aluminum and dents and things like that. So in this video, we are going to figure out how to get those dents out and how we're gonna get it back onto the frame and get it riveted and secured on there so it never falls off again. Before we get started, I have a really piece of exciting news that Airstream finally sent us the C channel. That is the correct C channel. So that is awesome. Finally. So now we don't have to put the old one back in. Now we can we have a brand new piece that is in mint condition. Let's get to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the pole jacks to lift the shell up enough, and then we're going to wedge those underneath so just at least give it some stability. So it's not just sitting on two pole jacks in the center because then it'd be pretty wobbly. Yeah, so we're just gonna go for it and see how it goes. All right, so here's our biggest area where it's dented and right here down below is the uh, where the actual dent is. But I think our main problem is this beam and it looks like obviously this is the weakest point. So when it landed on here, it kind of crumpled a little bit, giving way right here, causing it to pop everything in. I'm gonna try to basically just pull that back and see if that helps. Cross our fingers that it's a simple fix. Oh, it's like giving it an adjustment, which I think that may have actually done some good. It's actually looking pretty good. That straightened out this piece for the most part. I mean, it's still a little bit bent, but what's nice is that this stuff is so flexible that I think I'll be able to, once we get it on there, you know, we'll be able to work it and fit it into the C channel. So yeah, straightening that piece out, just bending it back, totally, release the tension off of this part and then this part popped back out. But other than that, the main problems were just the edges that got kind of curled in when it got landed on, especially just in the corners and stuff. But I just did this back corner just with my hands and I was able to kind of just pull it back out. This metal, it's aluminum, it's so soft, it's so thin that it's kind of easy to bend and work with. So that's exciting, good news. Mm. We're off to a good start in season two, guys. All right, so today we're going to lift the shell and put it back on the frame. Now, how we're gonna lift the shell, originally I thought, you know what, let's get a crane, that'll probably be the easiest, but after thinking about it, discussing it, working out all the details, what we what we decided on, we thought was the easiest, require the least amount of people and the least amount of money, because we don't have to rent a crane or anything, is what we're gonna do is we got all the pole jacks back inside right now. We're gonna lift it up enough, and what we got is cinder blocks, two 12 foot, two by sixes and we're gonna put those across the front and the back on the bottom and so we're gonna lift it up enough put a, a cinder block on each corner under the uh, two by six and this is uh, the cinder blocks are gonna be on the outside of the, the shell and then we'll put one cinder block the shell will rest on that two by six the, the two by six will rest on the two cinder blocks the shell will rest on the two by sixes so We'll do that, then we'll lift it up again. We'll put another cinder block, so it'll be two cinder blocks high, then another one, then another one. So we needed to get it up to four high. Also, the weather, again, 
nothing was on the radar you know or on the forecast until today and now for the next two hours or so it's supposed to be a light drizzle rain uh, so and hopefully the wind does not pick up because the wind is really going to be our enemy right now and also rain because I don't want to get the subfloor and everything in there wet because that's all going to be exposed. So. Alright, now we got the uh, frame under there. It's almost lined up. It's very hard to uh, get it lined up, but as far as we can tell, the shell is definitely skinnier than it should be, at least on one side. So, anyway, I'm gonna go around and get the C channel kind of lined up in place, uh, make sure that everything is snug with the subfloor, and get it lined up as best as possible that way. And then we're gonna start to lower the shell and see and kind of get it into place and I'm gonna have to go around and kind of flex it out and make sure it fits so there we've got it almost on all the way around this back corner the last one um, this is gonna be the hardest because the body is definitely bent in a little bit this way and we're having trouble this C channel right here is about a quarter of an inch out and it's not lining up flush with this one so I think what the problem is, is I'm gonna have to take this piece of the subfloor out and just trim a little bit of the corner off so that it gives it some room to just pull in about a quarter of an inch so Good morning, everybody. We got the shell on last night, for the most part. It's sitting on the frame completely. It got so dark, um, we realized last night that it was a little crooked. So instead of trying to continue in the dark, 
Um, we strapped it down. The front side was about a quarter to a half an inch to the road side, and the back was the same amount to the opposite side. So we thought about taking a ratchet strap, you know, kind of slowly tightening that and just to pull it over a little bit because it's loose. So we might try that, but before we get too complicated, I might just try to kick it. <laughs> See, <laughs> because you know what, hey, might as well, might as well try the easy way. It's barely got to move, just a little bit. So I think if I just kick it, if I apply enough force, it should slide, see what happens. Right now, the other side, the C-channel is flush. Oh, hey, cat. The C-channel is flush with the outrigger on the other side, and it's hanging over 3 quarters of an inch on this side. So, cat, what do you want? A neighbor's cat. So if I push this in about, what's well, half of 3 quarters? Oh, if I make that eight. Anyway, I'm gonna just get it close enough. I, I'm, I'm not good at math, so. Let's see, let's see if I can even move it first. Watch out, kitty. Oh, it's moving. All right, we're almost to half an inch. It's actually working. That's amazing. All right, we're half an inch. I just moved it a quarter of an inch. Awesome. Okay. Here's the other side. And, oh yep, we are hanging over. It's pretty close, so it's about an eighth of an inch difference from one side to the other. That actually worked. That was way easier than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a little difficult, but hey, you know what? Sometimes all it takes is a good kick. All right, now that we got the shell straightened out, the next thing we need to do is remove all the trussing. All this wood, because I think it's kind of holding it when it fell. I think the whole shell definitely got a little tweaked. And so I'm going to remove all that and then see what it does. And kind of hopefully it settles in there a little better. But before I do that, I'm going to go make sure that all my C channel is secured to the plywood. So that doesn't shift at all. So I'm just using these half inch screws here, self piercing lathe screws. And that'll just secure the C channel to the frame or to the wood. All right, time to take this thing off, which I'm super excited about, so I can stop hitting my head on it. Oh, you guys. I can walk around in here without hitting my head. It feels so nice. You can also walk around without falling through the frame. Because we got a subfloor. Awesome, okay. Now I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna put the uh, pancake wafer screws, whatever they call these things. Anyway, these are the screws that go into the subfloor. I'll put a link to where you can get them down below because I had to find them. These are self-drilling screws that drill through the subfloor into the frame, cinch it down nice and tight. I just realized I never finished marking off all my chalk lines to know where all the frame cross members are, so this is gonna be a fun process. Yeah, there might be a lot of misses. Hopefully not too many, but uh, we'll see. All right guys, so we just drilled the hole through the floor, through the C-channel. Quarter inch carriage bolts. We get through. So these carriage bolts and washers and everything are stainless, I believe. Zinc. They are zinc. I wasn't sure about zinc and aluminum, but I know that if you put, if steel and aluminum touch, they actually corrode each other over time because they have two different electrical potentials. So what I did was I got a nylon washer to put on first because nylon is plastic and plastic is what? Plastic is um, an insulator. An insulator. That's yeah. right. So we're going to insulate the two metals. So we're going to put a nylon washer first and then the metal washer on top of that. And then, oh, and then a lock washer. 
So grab me a lock washer, one of those small ones that spilled all over the place. Okay. So nylon washer, lock washer, uh, regular washer, lock washer. Where's the lock? Now we're gonna go around and keep doing that. I don't know why your truck needs to be so loud. Like, come on. Start buck riveting. I got our buck a pneumatic buck rivet gun here, and I got Tom on the inside with the bucking bar. Right. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, we got the bucking bar which smashes the rivet on the other side. And we're just gonna go around all the corners and uh, see how this goes because I've never buck riveted before. So, okay. Okay, let's go. That'll work. It'll work. It'll get her done. All right, friends, that pretty much wraps up putting on the shell. Super stoked to finally get this thing on. It's been, what, six months? Six months since this thing fell off. We finally got it on. Yeah, it's like a major phase, like the very, basically the first phase of this renovation is is completed, right? You know, what we had to do was the demolition, get rid of every, get rid of all the junk inside here, get rid of the old cell floor that was rotted out, clean up the frame, restore it, paint it, replace the uh, rusted out outriggers, replace the messed up C channel, put the shell back on. So phase one of the renovation is complete. Lots of work left to do, but super stoked to finally have the shell back on. So pretty much all that's left that's original is the frame, the fresh tank, the gray tank, the shell, the windows, and what else? The propane tanks, some of the C-channel. Really tried to salvage as much as we can, but unfortunately when you get something like this, you just never know how much damage there is. And as much as I want to salvage and not create waste, you know, it is what it is. Thanks for following along on our Airstream renovation journey and can't wait for what this new season brings. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe, like this video, and leave us a comment below. If you're doing an Airstream renovation, let us know how you're doing it. If uh, you're doing anything different or whatever, we wanna hear all the tips and tricks, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can all help each other out here in the Airstream reno community. So again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.